said in my opening statement that the design of your bureau, you have a fixed term of office, absent, as the courts have found and the statute pertains, some exceedingly grievous act, um, you can't be removed from office. So the Bureau, as designed by my Democrat colleagues without Republican votes in Dodd-Frank, designed this Bureau to be unaccountable. The chairwoman spent this time, I would say, badgering you about the design of offices within your Bureau that are fully within the purview of you as director to design. So let me, let me just drill in on this question of independence of your Bureau. Would you describe, as you see it, what Dodd-Frank gives you the power to do, uh, the, the act that, you, uh, that created the CFPB and uh, your office? Uh, Congressman, as you stipulated, there is tremendous authority that Dodd-Frank vests in the director of the Bureau, uh, including related to the organization of the Bureau itself. Section 1012 stipulates that the director has the uh, flexibility to organize the Bureau as it sees fit. Uh, many of the sections of the uh, act stipulate that the authority is vested, in fact, in the director, and certain activities can be delegated further at the director's discretion. Okay, so that does include the power to make decisions as to staffing? Yes. As, it does include limitations on political appointees or no limitations on political appointees? Uh, Dodd-Frank reiterates the powers to the executive branch under Title V for the hiring authorities that are there. So does that include the availability of uh, a consumer complaint database? Uh, yes, it does. It, it, there is a responsibility to collect uh, consumer complaints and stipulate some, some ways that those complaints okay. should come to the Bureau. Does that include redesigning offices within the Bureau, the, the, to the question of the, the chairwoman? Yes, it does. So you, you have that capacity to, to change the structure of the offices that report to you as director? Yes, there are some offices that are listed in statute that shall exist, but again, there is flexibility with respect to which responsibilities uh, go to those. So absent a change of statute, you have that flexibility on reporting structures? That is correct. Okay, and as you highlighted, you think this reporting structure that you currently have is better than what you've, you, you previously saw? Uh, with respect to fair lending, I, I do believe that. Again, the, the purpose was to enhance the prominence of that as part of the Bureau's mission in the office of the director, as in, in many other agencies across the government, putting that in the front office is something that actually enhances the ability of that office to influence the other activities and coordinate activities across the entire agency. And you also have flexibility on the membership and structure of the con uh, Consumer Advisory Board, do you not? Uh, yes, the, the statute does stipulate some skill sets that must be present in the, in the membership, but there is much flexibility there. Okay. Have you had a chance to uh, uh, review the Consumer First Act that the chairwoman has uh, offered? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm generally familiar with still looking at it. I know it's uh, similar to, in some ways, uh, prior introduced. And it, and it seems as though that legislation mandates uh, specifics on every one of the questions I just asked, does it not? I believe that it does. Uh, but you'd also, um, but you could also implement all the changes within this legislation uh, without the bill getting signed into law, could you not? Uh, some of them, certainly with respect to the organizational issues you raised, yes. So if we're talking about the Democrat message today is that you're an independent bureau, but we don't like you, right? It's a very confusing thing when we see legislation to get into your space and interfere with your independence, right? I, we're talking about the broad structural challenges of the CFPB we see and how that impacts consumers. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we just have a fundamental debate here within Congress that is a debate for us as, as lawmakers to make. You need to act under the statute that as, as designed, not based off of what is being yelled at you um, at, via congressional hearing. We'd like you to listen to us. We'd like to, for you to hear our input. Unfortunately, the design of your statute, you don't have requirements to do so. Um, I want to change that statute so that we have a, a structure that is a bipartisan board, a structure that puts you on budget, 
but that's something that's, that's for me to fight about, not you. You're the director and you have a statute to operate under. The final thing I'd ask for is one final question, commensurate with your time, uh, Chairwoman, um, about innovation. Uh, we had a hearing last week about consumer credit reporting agencies. In your written testimony, you say the number one consumer uh, complaint in 2018 was about consumer credit reporting agencies. Do you believe that innovation in the marketplace and competition uh, can create better options for consumers? Uh, as a general matter, absolutely. The gentleman's yes. time has expired. We, would you please let her 